the ability to play a number of positions, uh, particularly midfield and uh, also in the final third. So uh, a versatile option and Liverpool need much needed uh, depth in that area. Uh, it could also be considered a replacement for Felipe Coutinho, who obviously left in, in January. Um, like Fakir, uh, Coutinho could play in a number of positions uh, and Fakir also has the ability to pluck magic out of nowhere, which obviously we saw from Coutinho quite a few times. And um, and Fakir's obviously got the, the, the mental uh, attitude that you know Liverpool feel will be able to cut it in the Premier League. He was captain at Lyon last season, uh, guided them to a uh, uh, Champions League qualification. So Liverpool are doing the business early and they're doing the business well. Um, Fakir and Fabinho are obviously really well thought of players all around the world. They had a number of teams tracking them. Liverpool are gaining a march on rivals. You know, you look at Chelsea who haven't even sorted the managerial situation out yet, whereas Liverpool are, are doing doing business and doing business really well and, and that, you know, only bodes well for the future as, you know, they look to once again do well in the Champions League but also make a push for the Premier League. It seems like you left left Chelsea at the right time with what's <laughs> happened. Is it a strange thing a great manager like Conte has just not been able to get the best out of the players this year? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know but um, obviously they won the league and then uh, things didn't happen well last year and we will, we will we will see what happens, but I think the club is in very good hands. Marina runs the club uh, together with Roman. I think they're doing an amazing job. One thing I can ensure the fans is that Chelsea is always going to be in a very safe hands with Roman and with Marina. Marina has done an amazing job all these years. Roman has invested a lot in this football club to bring Chelsea where where it is today. So I think. We, we, we as players, ex-players, we thank Roman for what he's done in our career and um, I think the fans also should appreciate what he's done for Chelsea Football Club. Roman Abramovich being such a football man, was he? did he talk football with you a lot? Was he very passionate in the game? Well, I think the only time you see Roman is when you stop winning games. Right. <laughs> but he's always there, I mean he comes to the games all the time to, 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 to to watch the games, maybe he might not come down every game to the dressing room, but once in a while he comes down, talk to the players, uh, comes to Cobham as well to the training ground, see the players. I mean, with Roman, you never know when he's coming in, and uh, he's, he likes to surprise us. And um, he loves his football, he's passionate about his football, he's invested a lot into the game, into Chelsea, and um, I hope he can continue to do that for many, many more years to come and remain a Chelsea owner because this club needs Roman and uh, that's simple as that and I'm sure with Marina and Roman they will they will always make this club. In Copenhagen, Denmark with the Mexico preview of their last friendly match against Denmark before the World Cup next week in Russia, Tom Marshall and John Sutcliffe. Tom, are we going to see a lineup that Osorio might be using in their World Cup debut or is he going to hide a lot of things? I think the experimentation that Osorio has been so criticised for during his term in charge of Mexico is coming to an end. I think we're going to see something approaching the starting 11 that we're going to see June 17th against Germany. I think he wants to put this team together. Obviously, there's been problems leading up to this World Cup. Nesta Araujo, the starting centre-back, is out of the camp. Diego Reyes, still a major injury doubt. Um, and I think now Osorio wants to see against a Denmark team that's ranked 12th in the world. Three, three places ahead of Mexico. I think Juan Carlos Osorio is going to want, to want to see a team basically that plays... Remember that game against Belgium in November where mm -hmm. Mexico dominated possession, scored three goals, got a 3-3 draw? I think that's the objective. I think, number one, make sure the team... The, the injuries for Andres Guardado, for Hector Moreno, that, they, that they're 100% ready for the Germany game. And then, obviously, the big one, Diego Reyes, is where's he at leading into this World Cup? That's the biggest question mark. I sort of told me a couple of days ago, if he can't play against Denmark, he's out of the World Cup. But at the same time, in the back line, Tom, outside Hector Moreno, there's no experience. So he might take it till a day before the game in Russia against Germany to see if it's Diego Reyes or Eric Gutierrez. Mucha fiesta, a lot of parties, a lot of tabloids come out about the Mexican team not behaving after the game in Estadio Azteca against Scotland. Is it going to help them? unite the team? Is it going to affect them? I think it's not ideal. I mean, going into a World Cup and all these stories come out like the 
the tabloid Mexican press. This isn't the, the normal Mexican press. This is definitely the tabloid, the, the extreme, mm -hmm. the paparazzi. And the players have been, you know, they've been pictured doing doing what they were doing. It was a day off though. It wasn't kind of like, it wasn't they were supposed to be in camp. They missed training and they were going partying. Um, at the same time, it's not ideal. But I think if there's one thing that's defined this group, not just this year, not just last year, but really since Juan Carlos Osorio took over, it's been the absolutely united. And I think, you know, the, the us against the world mentality, I think that's kind of even more entrenched now after this event than it was before. I mean, you know, you asked Andres Guardado today, like, what does Mexico need to, to succeed at this World Cup? And one of the things he mentioned was the, the how united this group is. Yeah, they got to control better their emotions, no excuses, and see if they can get it done. Their last friendly match on Saturday against Denmark, and then it's time to start giving results next week against the world champion Germany team where Mexico will debut in the World Cup in Russia. From Copenhagen, Denmark, Tom Marshall, John Sutcliffe, ESP. For your chance to win a share of $40,000, be sure to go over the website and fill out your match predictor. Right then, a match predictor first, as we're doing it across the Atlantic Ocean. Thousands of miles separate us, Jules, but let's see if this will work. I'm sure it will, no problem. So let's start off with the group stages. Uruguay, Egypt, no problem. You've got Portugal going out in the group, Morocco going through. What's the thinking there, Jules? Yes, I really like this this, uh, this Morocco squad. I think it's, they've got talented players, youngsters as well. Going forward, they're quite solid at the back. Hervé Renard, the manager, has worked his magic in Africa for many years now, for a few countries as well. And I think they can be the surprise and knock out Portugal. Wow, you've got France, Peru, then Denmark going out, Argentina, Croatia going through, Brazil, Switzerland, Germany, Mexico, Belgium, England, and then Colombia, Senegal, which would set up this beautiful bracket. Let's take you through then the knockout stages. Oh, look at this. Spain against Egypt. I wonder what the talking point would be in that tie. Uh, who would you have, Jules? Oh, Spain, uh, you know, I like, I like the Salah uh, Ramos uh, reunion, if you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah Ramos hat trick. I will go for Spain. Uh, Argentina, Peru. Yes. Oh, and, and a South American uh, clash. Yeah. Uh, and Peru will be hard to play against. I'll go for Argentina, the one you're going Argentina to go through. Uh, meanwhile, Germany, Switzerland, Germany. Yes, Germany. Germany to go through. Colombia, England. That's a good one. That's a really interesting one, I think. And yeah. that's to be a close one. I saw Colombia playing against France in March. And you know what? I'll go Colombia on penalties. Right, good. There you go. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you're not. Don't say sorry. You're not sorry. Uh, Uruguay, Morocco. <laughs> then at the other side of the bracket we go. Uh, you like Morocco. How much do you like them? I like them a lot, but not enough to be Uruguay, Luis Suarez, and Inson Cavani, and, uh, and uh, Godin. France, Croatia, let, oh yeah, I went, yeah, France go through. Uh, Brazil, Mexico. <laughs> uh, Brazil to win this one, but I expect Mexico to put a good fight. You think so? Belgium against Senegal, meanwhile, yeah. that could be fun. That could be very fun. I like this Senegal squad a lot, a bit like the Moroccan one. Uh, I think Belgium will edge it just about. Belgium to go through. Okay, let's take it through then to the quarterfinals. Uh, Uruguay, France. France, yeah. you know, we're going to have right. to work for oh, it, oh, but right. Kylian yeah. Mbappe in the end will win it. Brazil, Belgium. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. The artist will be out, but Brazil and Neymar will win this one. Brazil to go through then. Let's take it to the other side of the bracket of the quarterfinals. Uh, Spain, Argentina. Oh, that's the big one. That's the one I think everybody's looking forward to uh, when you do all your predictions and everything. Yeah. And I go for Argentina. I think Leo really? Messi. And we win this one. Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, Germany, Colombia, meanwhile. Germany doing the German way, clinical, one nil win. So then, let's take it through to the semi finals. We've got Argentina against Germany. Yes, and I go for Argentina to win this really? one. And, and wow. Get to the final again. Again. Wow. Yeah, the fourth in a row, then, if you count the Copa America as well. No, we don't. Uh, France against Brazil, meanwhile, in the other semi-final. Oh, you know why? It's a repeat of 1998 and France will win. Maybe not 3-0 this time, but they qualify for the final. Some bias in this, I'm sure. So Argentina against no, France in the 2018 World Cup final. 
Is it even worth asking, Jules, who's going to win it? <laughs> yes, of course. It's, it's an amazing game. It goes 1 0 for France, 1 1 Messi scores, 2 1 for France, 2 yep. 2 Messi scores again. We're getting to the end of the game, and Kylian Mbappe, out of nowhere, scores the winner for France. Julian Laurent, thank you very much for that very unbiased <laughs> and objective World Cup predictor. Uh, more predictors over on the website. Let's Craig Burley breaking his down. Remember, he's got Brazil to go all the way. Or Germany. Now, Craig Burley, I seem to remember in the past you saying that Tottenham need to win trophies yeah. to persuade Kane well, to that, stay. That may happen. That may happen. But uh, it's great for him, isn't it? That big bumper deal before you go to the World Cup. Just go and check your bank account. But why do it now? Why do it before the World Cup? Well, I think, I think what's... I'm, I'm, I'm surmising here, but I think what, what's happened is there's, there's big pressure on Tottenham to start paying bigger wages to the star players. He is the star man. You've got... The threats of Pochettino potentially leaving, so I think Daniel Levy has had to, right. had to get this guy tied up. Uh, one to keep Harry Kane happy, two to show Pochettino that, that he is going to move the needle financially, and three, if any suitors come along and there's going to be lots, be it Real Madrid, Bayern Munich teams in Italy or another team in England, that they've protected their asset in terms of the transfer fee that they can ask. So for Tottenham it works in all angles. For Harry Kane it works because let's be honest. The contracts are hardly worth uh, what they're written on. If Harry Kane wants to go, Harry Kane will go. So this doesn't mean much, apart from obviously Harry Kane doubling his salary. With regards to suitors, you don't feel that this is a big thing? Well, I think it allows Tottenham to, to be play uh, hardball, more so with the Real Madrid or whoever, now that Harry Kane's on a longer contract and on bigger money, and so it protects their fee. If, if anything, they'll be able to ask for more and be able to drive a harder bargain, it keeps the player happy moving into a new stadium. Look, I think, I think Harry Kane likes it at Tottenham. I think he enjoys it there, he stated that. But I don't buy into all this, he doesn't want to play for anybody else. If Tottenham don't get their act together, if Pochettino leaves, or, or if they don't start signing players or keeping the best players and winning stuff, Harry Kane will leave. Right. And it is absolutely the right thing for him to do. But I think that's at least 12 months down the line. What about those suggesting that maybe this is a lack of ambition from Harry Kane, that he's not willing to get out of his comfort zone? I think he will get out of it. I think he will. Why? I just don't think it's Well, now. why has he signed a six-year deal, then? Listen. Look, if I'm Harry Kane, I score ten goals at the World Cup, yes. everyone's going to be after me. Everyone's so what... after him anyway. But if everyone's after him, why has he just well, signed think, a new contract? Well, well, why has he made it harder for suitors to come in? Well, he hasn't really, because... Well, you just said that he did. You just said no, that signing this contract no, think means I think that people are going to have to pay more. I think more. It's, made it, it's, made it more, it's made it easier for Spurs to ask for more money and drive a harder bargain. The end result will always be the same. When agents and players become, get involved and, and players become unhappy and a player wants to go, it will happen eventually as long as the money is right. I just think from this perspective is that I think Harry Kane wants at least another year, they move into the new stadium, see what happens with the manager, see what happens with signings, and if it doesn't work after that... I think in 12 months or thereabouts, Harry Kane will look to leave if Tottenham are not getting success. That being said, the risk is, as, in, as a player, you can get any sort of injury. So that is potential to happen down the line. The upside for him is he signed the bumper contract so financially secure. I think it's a win-win for all. I never felt Harry Kane would leave this summer, right. sign a new contract or not. I think that's 12 months. Still a Leon player. However, that move to Liverpool looks imminent. Uh, what sort of player are they getting? Well, they got a fantastic uh, player who's had the season of his life, best season of his career with Lyon uh, this year with incredible numbers, but not just the goals and the assists, it's the way he, he took the responsibility after Lacazette left and Tolisso and Gonalon uh, last summer and he carried that team through, especially when they were not playing really well, by being the main guy. And I think he showed the character that he has as well as the talent that he has with Lyon this season. And I think Liverpool, whether, where they're going to play him, that's another... Yeah issue and we, we can debate a lot about that but they get a fantastic player with a wonderful left foot. Well let's take a look at the possible. Liverpool of course done business early. Remember they signed Cater last year, spent that season in Germany, now making the move to Anfield. Fabinho of course signed a couple of weeks ago. Fakir looks like he's moving to Anfield as well. Could be a whole new midfield. Uh, Jules, you, you were saying you don't know where he's playing. We've got him alongside Fabinho and Cater with of course Mane, Firmino and Salah up front. Is that how it could work? 
Yeah, so the, his best position is, is behind the striker or behind two strikers like he did in the second half of the season with Lyon uh, this year. I might like a bit more balanced team with the three midfield and I don't think Fekir can play like that. You know, with a holding player and, and two number eights alongside Fabinho or Henderson, for example, that's not his game. But if you give him that free role as a number 10, I think he will shine there. But it just gives them another option. It's a different profile they didn't have. Also someone who's very, very easy in small spaces, which they struggle at this season, for example. When every time they yeah. were playing a team, a team that was really deep, with no space to run in for Salah or Mane, they struggled a bit. He will give them that. His first touch is so good that he's very at ease in those small spaces and they didn't have that before. He's very technical. And also the fact that if if that is the, th the three in midfield, by the way, the midfield that gets you to the Champions League is yeah. just getting the old biff. That's true. The old Spanish archer. See you later. Rightly so, though. Well, you know, it's a cut, cutthroat business, like any business. And if you want success, sometimes that's going to happen. I still think Henderson will have a part to play in there because he's very workmanlike. But looking at the ages of those players as well, they're all sort of either mid-24, you know, 24, 23, yeah. 24. Peak time, they're all young. They've got four or five years before they even maybe get to the peak. Uh, and, and, you know, add that to the players that are already there. James Milner's done a great job in several positions. We know how energetic Keita is. Fabinho's can play midfielder at the back. Uh, Adam Lallana's not been fit a lot this year. Uh, so this is great. This is typical Liverpool at the moment. This is, looks great for them going forward. Yeah. Absolutely going to be fantastic football again next year, no matter who plays. But they still need a centre-half and a goalkeeper. That's the next step. It, we're going to be talking about this a lot, obviously, uh, towards the start of the season after the World Cup. But how close are they to Manchester City with that lineup? Uh, not close enough because they're still, the, the goalkeeping situation's a problem. Uh, and the centre-half position albeit that improved in the second half of last year. They sent a position, they need a partner for Van Dijk regularly going forward. If they do that, I think... Just a reminder, ESPN FC with you throughout the whole World Cup, bringing you everything you need to know with plenty of laughs as well along the way, which is epitomised, as always, by Best of the Week. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, one week to go until the World Cup starts. Huh? What? I'm ready. <laughs> You're not playing. What was your number when you played? In the World Cup? Or just yes, I mean the World because Cup. Because it was alphabetical. We're talking about That's the World Cup, aren't we? You didn't even know it was alphabetical, did you? No, I didn't. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? <laughs> You've got Kanti in there for Chelsea and France. What about Chris? Hang on, Chris, Chris is in the team. Oh, Chris sorry. is in the team. My eyes are yeah. not great. I'm really uh, good. I've got you there. Why am I the guy picking this <laughs> team? <laughs> what number were you, Shaq? One. <laughs> you were number one goalkeeper, were you? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Is that true, Shaq? You were in third choice? You might have been The tough week. <laughs> well, I filled in a World Cup, didn't I do? Right? Yes. I forgot about Neymar. And they were criticising me. <laughs> <laughs> I stick up for you, by the way. And you're having to go at me. <laughs> Come on, then. Who is more crucial to their team? Messi or LeBron? Without Messi, right? Yeah. Argentina don't get to the World Cup. They don't get to the World Cup. I think there's a very good chance that they still would have got to the World Cup. See, here's the problem. If you'd actually listened to the whole question I was going to ask Shaq, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have wasted all this time. Oh, oh, no, you didn't ask me the question. <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how, how could Gab listen to the whole I question? The the to have, there's been a lot of hoo-ha over the last 24 hours about the future. Hoo-ha? Hoo-ha is a technical term. 15 was always my number, so it was always the uh, Why was it 15? Oh. I was as full of this out. Oh. Oh. One squad from 15 yards, yeah, never you, any food. You could put a decimal point in between the one and five. Well, <laughs> you don't respect the elderly, and then... <laughs> <laughs> it made me cry. And then... So Messi doesn't play for Argentina, they wouldn't have qualified for the World Cup, correct? Agreed? Yes. <laughs> Senegal to go to the semis and Argentina oh, to on. kind of fluff. Let's order all this. Can we get a drugs tester in here now, please? <laughs> and you come and test They're going to beat England, I'm telling you. Gab, why is everybody underestimating Belgium to win the World Cup? I, I was one of the first people here in England to write about the golden generation. Oh, and, and so I kind of have a lot riding on the fact that they actually win a major tournament. <laughs> you want to go home, Shaq? No, I was just wishing I had 80 million. What would you be buying, Shaq? Wait. A one-way one ticket to Trinidad. Oh. 
Oh. But seven, seven one me ticket. Oh, that was a little late. <laughs> Get <Yeah>. your family. <laughs> yes, you left the family Ooh. behind very quickly. I was just told pick up work up 11, and that's what I went. Smell a bit of BS here. Back tomorrow, Shaka's office, his wife's birthday. Ali's travelling to Columbus. You're going to where? Chicago. Wow. Yeah. I'll be here with Craig. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, see, yeah. And what a lovely yeah. time we've had. Yeah, you love it, really. Well, I yeah. absolutely love it, really. By the way, Senegal going to the semi-finals. Where's and why got... is Ian Dark getting asked to do all these teams? That was brilliant. Darkie did not like that at the end. Darkie. He was getting abuse on Twitter as well. Was he? Yeah, over Well, it. he was answering everybody the next morning. Yeah, <laughs> just a... Into extra time. We're you... a bit late. Eh? Pardon? We're a bit late, are No, we? like, just you. Well, where is everyone? Um, Rascal Flats? Is Stevie? Stevie's a gone to a concert. Shaka's, it's uh, Mrs. Hislop's birthday. Ali's gone to Columbus. For an MLS game, is it? Yeah. With Adrian. Yeah, and um, Maris has gone to Chicago for the Reds game. What? So you, just you? <laughs> just me and you left. And Jules, Jules is going to Russia. Jules, I'm excited to see where, wh how are you going to do it? Will it be a here I am on the plane selfie or here's a picture of the, the Moscow <laughs> departure TV? How are you, you going to sell this on, uh, on social media? Because a lot of your colleagues have been doing that. Yeah, and the boys from the ESPN digital team are asking us to send some videos before oh, yes. on the plane before we take off, when we land, the first thing. I'm not, not so sure. I'm, I'm thinking about packing right now. And it's hard to pack. Some of the boys already over there saying it's quite chilly. Uh -oh. Do I take a coat? Do I oh, go casual? No like, you know, I'm, yeah, I yeah. know. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, tell, Craig what your, tell Craig what your first game was, always going to be. Uh, Morocco-Iran, the game the whole world <laughs> is waiting for. Morocco-Iran. Well, you never know, it could be a classic. <laughs> there we I go. i tell you what, uh, Gavin McCarty yeah. hasn't got that problem with the parking. No. No, one pair of canvas trousers, one pair of underbugs. Philadelphia Eagles top. Philadelphia Eagles top, yep. one jacket, <laughs> That's uh, it. one aerosol can, job done. That's uh, it. Pair, oh, and a pair of moccasins, <laughs> no socks. Obviously. And a lot of espressos. Uh, no, uh, Julian's not really one for these selfies on Twitter. Have you no, I haven't seen Julian. He's, he's, he's not really a selfie he's man. Not really. No. That might change no. in Russia. No. You know what, just these people though that are all, even with, right, ESPN, FC Digital bosses have said videos, I get all that. But even there's lots of people out there when nobody's telling them they have to do so, oh my god. Here's me, here's me, here's me eating a bacon sandwich. Oh, Here's me going to buy a newspaper. Well, there you go. Maybe some people are interested in that. Seriously. I'd love, I'd love publicity. To... Whatever. Will the World Cup... I'm off Twitter, you know that. I know, you're on a sabbatical, aren't you? Well, I'm not off you're Twitter. You're not tweeting. I'm reading the news and the opinions of other people, but I'm not, I haven't been tweeting for a few weeks. What's been the... I don't want to get myself in trouble. What's been the catalyst for this? I'm bored. You're bored saying you're not going to tweet? I can't... Sometimes when I go on Twitter, it's not the abuse. Because the abuse, I said this to you the other day, the abuse on Twitter was something that you absolutely expect. What I didn't expect was the, 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 the flaunting of, of public people who just go out and flaunt themselves and others, yep. telling, the, telling everybody how good a job they've done. Oh. And I can't, I just, you're the best. Because you can text people, you know, and you can phone them. You don't have to go on Twitter and say, you're the best. No, no, you're the best. No, no, you're the best. <laughs> Great work. It was just like giving out compliments. That's great like... work. Oh, I enjoyed your work. It was great. We did, really? It's quite sad, isn't it? Will the World Cup give us the thrills like the last Champions League, all considering counter-attacks and lots of defensive errors? I, I, I think there'll be lots of defensive errors. I think we're going to be talking a lot about VAR. Yeah. And it's and it's use. Uh, it's, it's not going to be anywhere near the Champions League. It's not League, going to be that standard because international football yeah. it isn't really that that way. There might be the odd game, but generally it's a it's a game of chess and it's a slower pace. Yeah, you kind of go into this. You can't have expectations too high, can you, Jules, with the caliber like kind of of the games? No, you can't. That's true. I don't think defensive is as strong maybe as they were four years ago and. And since then, some young players, very talented ones, have emerged as well. You see with France, you see with Germany, for example, even with England, to some case, to some extent. So, I think we, we see some goals. I think it will be a very interesting one. Meanwhile, will Justify win the Triple Crown tomorrow? What's that? That is a horse. Is that, this is in England, isn't it? Uh... Oh, is that the Kentucky? No, 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 it's the Belmont tomorrow, isn't it? Oh, you've lost me. I don't follow the horses. 
So you won the Kentucky Derby, and what was the other one? The Preakness? I don't follow the GGs. No? You follow the F1? Yes. Who's winning the F1 at the moment? Well, nobody, because the race is on Sunday. Right, but who's and leading four. the uh, championship? Uh, uh, I think you're a big fan. What's I know, wrong I with just, you? I can't remember who's winning it. Oh, what? Who do you root for? Do you root for Lewis Hamilton? No, um, no. I just enjoy the, the, the thrill of the racing. Surely you want someone to win. Oh, I actually like, well, McLaren. Right. But they're having a tough time. Okay, who rides for McLaren these days? Fernando Alonso. Okay. Very interesting. Are you, a, are you a Max Verstappen fan, Craig? Are you, yeah. are you in with Max or are you out of Max? No. Too many accidents. I'm in with Max because he's still only 20, but he needs to uh, have less accidents, Julian, I think. Good. Less accidents <laughs> means better racing. He's very fast. You don't like Formula One. I used to when I was growing up. I no, follow no. IndyCar as well, the American version. All right, okay. Indianapolis 500. <laughs> wow. Gigant to go there. <laughs> Look at you. Why don't you go there? Uh, I don't know. No. Oh. Jules, you follow the F1? Yeah, I like watching it. Yeah, I like watching it. It's yeah. big in France, really big. Yeah? Yeah, but don't have a French Grand Prix now. Was it Alain be... Prost? Alain Prost was French, wasn't he? Yeah. But everyone hated Alain Prost. Yeah, Alain Prost, yeah. Wasn't he like the enemy? Yeah, yeah, he was a bit... He was the anti senate Yeah, he was a the bit miserable. The professor. He was very good. He was very good. He was miserable. John Alesi. John Alesi. We had John Nigel Alesi, Mansell. Yeah, as well. And now we've got a few. Yeah. Uh, Esteban Ocon. <laughs> yeah. It's like and a really Sebastian rubbish Gordon quiz well. show. <laughs> <laughs> now that Kane has signed a deal that is thought to double his wage structure, what are the chances Toby signs a new deal with Spurs? None. Slim. Done. Jules. Jules. Nope. Nope. That's no it. Chance. Which nope. World Cup team do you think will do the worst in Russia? Russia? Uh, well, according to our SPI, they're, they're favourites in the group to go through. Who are going to be the whipping uh, boys? Panama. Panama. Yeah. Jules. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I think they're pretty. I think they scored the goal today against they Germany. They looked right today against they're Germany. Pretty bad. Quite sprightly. Well. Well, all right. <laughs> uh, what is your golf handicap, Mr. Burley? It's controversial as well, it's apparently. It's a bit controversial because my handicap lapsed when I left the UK in 2013, even though I play all the time with Mr. Nickel. Uh, so officially it is what? Well, it was. Officially it was eight when I left England, but it had been seven for many years. So it's probably, what, five now? Depending who's watching this clip. Right. Well, I, doubt your I would say... The club watching, they? <laughs> They'd actually do. Oh, my word. They they do they do watch. Watch. Just answer the question. <laughs> oh, probably about five. Five. Jules, do you play? Yeah, well, when I left France 14 years ago, I was three, but now I'm not so sure. Depending on who's watching me, <laughs> which country I'm playing in, which course I'm playing in. I play Paul too, you know, like, yeah, it depends really, Listen, I can't really say. He's the Jean, he's the Jean Van de Velde of ESPN FC's golf team, man. Oh yeah, shoes and socks off. Does, looks great, and right at the end he yeah. bottles it. Okay, that is it, golf, golf F1, <laughs> horses, you've had it all today. ESPN FC 